South Africa's national defense has been deployed as the government tries to quell the violence. Many of the communities affected by the looting have now started Operation Cleanup, but many small businesses say they have no idea how they will recover from this. To give us an update on the protests and the looting sparked by the incarceration of ex-president Jacob Zuma, we have South African journalist and editor Cadiz Bailey joining us. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Good evening, Felicity. Could you give us the latest? What's the confirm those figures and tell us what's the latest with the situation in South Africa? Indeed, Felicity, 117 deaths have been confirmed by the minister in the presidency this evening. What we do know is that in Gauteng, the situation has stabilized quite significantly. We've only seen six incidents of looting um, overnight until now. How, um, KZN, KwaZulu-Natal, is still a little bit more volatile, the minister report. They've seen about 39 incidents of looting between last night and today. So still quite a little bit of a volatile situation in KZN. We are also seeing tensions between communities in KZN as um, angry as in angry residents seem to catch looters who are in the in the in the midst of the of their acts and in the in the middle of the violence, then taking the law into their own hands and then these racial tensions causing quite a little bit of a, a ruckus in these communities, 15 deaths so far. Um, the government has tried to say that it wasn't linked to racial tensions, but there are uh, concerns on the ground that it is linked to racial tensions between these communities. Now, what, what is the assessment of government's response to the protests and the looting? What are civil society uh, groups saying and generally what is the feeling you're getting look i think there's a lot of sadness at the moment in terms of what's happened and and how our economy questions about how our economy is going to be able to recover from what's happened how our small businesses going to be able to recover i think civil society organizations are, are particularly concerned about the, the the high death toll but also concerned about the the the, the level of um general disregard that the looters have had for for businesses and for people who have who have these small businesses um we do know that the south african national defense force is on the ground we've got about ten thousand um soldiers who have been deployed there's also been a statement from the head of the the military saying that people that um reserves should come on board and should should prepare to be uh, to be called on so there's definitely uh from the government's end a sense of trying to make sure that there is a very strong police presence, that the strong army presence, that there is a, a message to the looters that they would not allow um, any further looting to continue, and that we are consider considering the, the rule of law quite significantly. Uh, but civil society is definitely, and society at large is very concerned about what's happening in the situation, and the, the challenge that we're not able to contain it um, too much. Uh, there are also concerns, I understand, about journalists. But before we get there, let's talk about the cleanup, the cleanup uh, operation that is uh, currently ongoing. There are some concerns uh, from small business owners that some of these people that are coming out to help to clean are those who participated in the looting. Uh, it, can you confirm this? And what is the general um, a feeling around the exercise of cleaning up in spite of the fact that the protest still continues. Look, I think in many of the communities that have been affected by these lootings and by these riots, Felicity, there are there's definitely a sense uh, um, among community members that we need to start cleaning up. We need to start pulling our our neighborhoods together, our communities together, and and get on with the job of of trying to resume a normal life as in whatever form that can be. So we're seeing uh, citizens, ordinary citizens, coming to the fore, starting a clean a physical cleanup campaign. On the other hand, we're seeing citizens taking, you know, a protecting. Uh, their businesses, protecting their malls, protecting their business districts by having nighttime vigils, by having um, security, they make sort of uh, creating security and neighborhood uh, defenses, and, and they are checking people who come in and out of the neighborhoods to make sure that it's not looters who are trying to get in and are trying to, uh, you know, uh, damage their neighborhoods a bit more. Um, there is a concern that there's a, a bit of vigilantism that could take place, and government has been very stern about saying, you know, community members have a right to protect themselves, of course, but they cannot take the law into their own hands and, and hurt other citizens. In, in trying to protect themselves. They cannot um, 
engage in issues of uh, in in incidents of vigilantism pardon me so there is a there's a bit of both sides but i think communities definitely want to see you know the their communities being cleaned up again their business districts being cleaned up again a lot of concern from businesses small businesses particularly that they're not able to recover from this that they won't be able they don't have insurance they're not going to be able to you know build themselves up again it's taken a lot for them to get where they are and they're just not sure how they're going to make it back all right, Candice, in the interest of time, I do have plenty of questions for you, but just uh, quickly, since I made reference to Rich already, can you uh, tell us the concerns being raised about journalists covering uh, the um, protests? Of course, um, earlier in the, at the weekend, particularly, we had at least two sets of journalists who were attacked um, in the protests. And uh, what, we've had, what we've seen since, uh, in fact, uh, there were at one media house they had all the equipment taken away from them at a, another media house they had their their vehicle damaged and, and attempted a, an attempted theft of their vehicle um so what we are seeing is that journalists are very vulnerable as they usually are when they are covering covering incidents of conflict uh, the journalists obviously media houses have um been very careful and, and given journalists extra protection and our national editors forum has spoken out and said that you know journalists are covering uh you know they 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 are an essential service and they should be allowed to to cover these events and to give the people um you know breaking accounts of what's happening but obviously a concern for journalists and for their safety um yeah. going forward no, no further incidents since then though all right, Candice, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed. And I know you are covering this, so please stay safe as well.